Welcome back, friends. This month, I get to interview my husband. He has a great story, and this story really affected me, even though it happened to Jeff. He had an encounter with the Lord that changed him forever. And this, because of the situation, I learned from it too. And I think that it will affect your life if you take it to heart. And don't forget to like and subscribe so that we can reach more people with the good news and the testimonies that are changing lives all around us. So, And you have a story too. Please share your testimony with others. Drawing people to Christ, that's what we have to do today. Okay, stay with me. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I get to talk to Jeff today about a testimony he has that really, it didn't just change your life, it changed my life. Yes. And I often remember this. He had an encounter with the Lord and it, it greatly affected him, but it very much affected me also. And so we want to share stories monthly, testimonies, and I asked him, please, can you share this story it really changed both of us. And so don't forget to like and subscribe today. And you share could do these it. videos yes. too. You could do it right now as we're getting started, or you can tell your friend, you know, this is a great testimony because it, it is, it's a wonderful testimony. It brings more of the good news to others. And we want to do that. So Jeff, I want you to share, and I will interject because there were things that yeah. I remember about this testimony that he doesn't remember because it affected me. I think in pictures and when somebody tells me a story, I see it in pictures. I see it like a movie. So that's how my memory is stamped with those, those images when somebody's explaining something to me or telling me a story. So I would love for you to share this. This was, this is a very special thing to me. Okay. So I'm going to give a little background here. Mm -hmm. um, this was in reference to, and I'm trying to remember the year. It was about 2009. Yeah. It was okay. early 2009. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory here. Mm -hmm. um, Jan and I were married pretty young, 22, 23. Yes. And I came into the marriage with all kinds of wrong expectations. <laughs> Okay, so that's one of the big trip, mm -hmm. trip ups that people get into when they first get married are all the expectations that they have. And what are some of those expectations? Oh, there's all kinds of them. People, people for one thing, they don't talk about, um, you know, they talk about premarital counseling mm -hmm. for young mm -hmm. couples. And a lot of people kind of dismiss that and ah, we don't need that. But I'll tell you what, it is good premarital counseling will help reveal those areas that later you'll run into, yeah. such as finances or children or jobs. Like how many children do you want? Do you want children? Homes, who's yeah. working, who's... Your values. Oh, tons What you of believe. Stuff. Where, if, where you're going to send your kids to school. All of it. Where you're going to go to church. There is a lot of things mm -hmm. that couples do not... In their, in their dating stage, don't really mm -hmm. explore and, and talk about and get to it. So anyway. Um, well, can I give one more? Yes. Yeah. One of the really serious ones is expecting or thinking that the person you're marrying is going to make you happy. Oh, yeah, that's you. They're going to yeah. complete you. They're going to satisfy you. And only the Lord can do that. There's nobody else. There is nothing else that can complete you. But the sweet presence of Almighty God, it's, it's who He is and your relationship with Him. And if you have that, that completes you. Mm -hmm. Money doesn't make you happy. Sex doesn't make you happy. 
um, gifts don't make you happy, even the behavior of your spouse, you might be very grateful, but that's not going to be entirely satisfactory, mm -hmm. is it, Jeff? No. We have a hole no. in us, each human, that only God can. He, he fits that shape inside of us yeah. so i just want to interject that and i think jeff thought i would make him happy i thought he would make me happy <laughs> oh yeah and, you know that's not to say that you can't derive some happiness absolutely and should, from your relationship and we, we of do course. often but they should not be mm -hmm. the primary source god created that's it husband and wife to be in union together mm -hmm. but with him in the center of the marriage yeah so and if he's not it, there's, there's a, a, a trinity there Absolutely. And, uh, that's the way it's designed to be. So Triangular. as I yeah. submit my life to God mm -hmm. and I submit to Jan in, mm -hmm. in loving her and serving her and she does the same for me. Yes. We can have, a, you know, a beautiful marriage and we have had. Yeah, and we um, do. We have a great marriage yeah. and we are a great team. We rely heavily mm -hmm. on one another to to go to the Lord together and pray and even separately go and get answers and come back and compare what we've gotten. And when oh, yeah. we know it's the same thing, we know the Lord's speaking to us and we have peace. It's this three-strand cord that can't easily be broken. Yeah. And the Lord's the cord in the middle. And we're grasping Him mm -hmm. and hugging each other, but He's in the middle. And I tell you, when He corrects either one of us or both of us sometimes, we just repent. Mm -hmm. And But we are a team and we love each other dearly. And... So, yeah. and a good marriage involves respect. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you know, you respect me and mm -hmm. I respect you. Mm -hmm. And we give that to one another, but we also humble ourselves. We so these to. are some of the key elements mm -hmm. to a good marriage. And so coming into the marriage, very young, <laughs> I we were babies. had <laughs> my ideas of what I wanted mm -hmm. the marriage to look like and what mm -hmm. I wanted to do. And and in a sense, Jan was sort of an accessory to my life. Okay, she was going to fill That's you know, the void in That's certain true. areas. And it came down I to, wanting to be, but. that <laughs> I was the center of the universe and everything kind of revolved around me, at least in my mind. So does that remind you of anyone you know? <laughs> Have you ever been the center of your own universe? Mm. So for many years, I made Jan and Danica very miserable with my well. self-centeredness and just if things didn't go my way um, I would just throw a fit now I wasn't I wasn't one of those violent throw things no. kind of guy I was, he was a very, silent he gave me the silent treatment oh, yeah. and, and and sulk for yep. days yep. yeah so I would it was I hard. would punish them that way it, it was hard it was very difficult and um, you can be abusive to somebody even without physical abuse would you say that you there's a little bit of a, yeah. a meanness so me there? Mental, mental. Um, yeah, it wasn't. Mental pain. Wasn't necessarily it, wasn't verbal a, abuse. Jeff was we never. Didn't, we didn't yell and scream at each no, other. He, but there yeah. was a lot of friction, and yeah, a, lot a lot of, of it pain. was caused by me. Yeah, a lot so. of pain. Because I wanted yeah. my husband to love me, and I wanted him to love Danica. So yes, but but we want to know, you to know that the Lord's redeemed everything. Oh yeah. Yeah, so um, That's I brought another a, testimony for another day. <laughs> <laughs> I brought a lot of things upon myself, and when mm -hmm. I did it, I also brought it upon my family. Yeah, so, it's true. You know, and the truth is, I knew that um, what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't want to stop. I was just, you know, it was all about me, and I was prideful, and I didn't want to humble mm -hmm. myself and admit that yeah. what I was doing was wrong, and and change. So fast forward several years down the road, we had some really rough spots. And so very, there, was a, very painful, there was a point where I just cried out to the Lord. Yeah. And I said, Lord, something's got to change mm -hmm. here because we we're almost to the point of getting divorced. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was bad. So I just, when I got to that low point of saying, God, whatever it takes, I want to get some help. And that's where I've seen a lot of guys turn their lives around when they really get serious yeah. and they really decide, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to live like this anymore. Mm -hmm. The pain of staying where I'm at yeah. is worse than the pain of changing. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to make some big changes here. And so 
part of that was I started listening to some uh, teaching and some other counselors well, and things that were helping me. A friend of ours found out the struggles we were having in our marriage mm -hmm. and and this person said, oh, you've got to listen, Jeff. You've got to listen to these tapes we have by Jack Frost. I'd never heard of him. Yeah. And Jeff said, I'm willing. And he took him and, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. So I started listening to these tapes. Now, Jack Frost is a gentleman that lived in Florida. He had a ministry mm -hmm. down there. His wife is still continuing the ministry. Mm -hmm. He has since passed on, yeah. gone to glory. Uh, but he had an interesting story. His, his testimony was that he was a uh, deep sea fisherman, commercial mm -hmm. fisherman, and just horribly um, an, an abusive man to his wife and his mm -hmm. family. And he got saved and he became a pastor. Mm -hmm. And so um, he lived many years just uh, trying to clean up his life and trying to you know, find his way. And he had a personal encounter, and he tells about it, his story of mm -hmm. the Lord coming to him and revealing the Father's love to him. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge turning point in his ministry, and that's how he became um, notable in, mm -hmm. in ministry circles because he was teaching about the Father's love. So that's what these cassette tapes were based on. That's These were the teachings that he was putting out there. So... Um, I'll just plug this real quick. There's another gentleman recently. I just thought of him. Leif Hetland. Oh, man. Who teaches mm -hmm. the same thing. And he has a tremendous ministry teaching people yeah. about the Father's love. And so um, I took those cassette tapes and I started listening to them on the way to work in the morning. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was working for a company in Denver. And I would drive from Colorado Springs. And that's where we lived, actually, in Cascade. So that was a pretty good drive in the morning, almost an hour up there. And I would put these tapes in and listen to them. And I was really starting to get some um, interesting viewpoints. And the Lord was just starting to minister to me. So one particular morning, I was driving up there. And I, I can recall this like I was still in, in the van. Yes. I had played... The, the tape and a lot of these cassette tapes were of his like ministry meetings. So they would record the whole meeting. And at the end, he would have a time where he would start praying for mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. and ministering to people. So he'd been talking about the Father's love. And, mm -hmm. and so what was so profound at that moment, and I can kind of feel this right now, <laughs> was when he said, he said, I want to pray for you now. Mm. But when he did that, he prayed in a different way. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you hear a minister or anybody, a believer that says, you know, yes, I, I want to pray for you. They'll, they'll pray something like if Jan had a headache and I said, you know, Lord, help Jan with her headache. And, and, you know, we just want this headache to go and whatnot. So that would be the kind of prayer that we would be used to. But what Jack did at that moment is he began to pray as if I was praying as if he was praying through me. I'll say it that way. So Jack began Or to, could you say, would you say the way you described it to me was, it was like you were praying the prayer. Exactly. Jeff could yeah. kind of sense, this came from Jeff's heart, but it was the Holy Spirit's anointing that as mm -hmm. Jack prayed, it was like Jeff knew he needed this and it was him. It, it, it was, was as if like I you was were praying, praying that prayer. prayer. Which so, is... Amazing. He didn't yeah. say to the crowd out there, right. you know, Lord bless these people and help them. Mm. But he just started praying, God help me, help me to understand, help me mm -hmm. to realize your love. And it was, it was so impactful. There was something anointed about mm -hmm. that prayer. And I just felt the anointing come on me. Wow. The presence like, of the like Lord. Like I never yeah. felt before. It was just yeah. this heavy, beautiful, warm just a loving presence, and it was like, wow. And I was just, I was praying in tongues mm -hmm. as he was praying this prayer. And so I just felt this anointing, mm -hmm. this ministry from God coming on me. And 
I was about 20 minutes away from the office and the cassette tape ended and I just continued to be in that attitude of worship and, and in the praise of the Lord. and the Lord just kept ministering and kept mm -hmm. ministering and he was just delivering me breaking things out of my heart mm -hmm. out of my mind and thinking and it was just an incredible time and when I got to work to the office building I didn't want to get out of the car I was just and you don't I just you know, sat there for probably five yeah. or ten minutes out in the parking lot and I was just like worshiping the Lord and the it was thick so presence of the incredible Lord. Yeah. and it was such a breakthrough for me and I just remember from that day on from that moment on things changed in me my my heart's attitude and there were things that were broken off of me and it was just a different a different me now would you say so. that your view of people and of me and others and of yourself changed. Oh yeah. Because if we know that yeah. God loves us and so you got a revelation that day of how much God loves you. And I remember something Jeff had shared with me that happened that he, you know, he didn't share and I'm going to share this with you. He said that when he was driving, the Lord manifested and began to rub his head like a little boy just loving on him. I could feel it. You could feel the Lord I touching see anything, his head. But, right. But I knew his presence. He was knew there. he was rubbing yeah. his head like a little boy and, and like a daddy would ruffle up a little kid's head or just, just hug a little child and hold them and and that's he he experienced that. It was so precious. Yeah. So that affected me because the the big thing with God's love is many of us have insecurities, but when we find out how much God loves us, it melts those insecurities. Oh, yeah. It just destroys the insecurity. And that's what all of us have to get a revelation of, is how much God loves us. And that's mm -hmm. what happened to you, and you began to change dramatically oh, yeah. to the point where, you know, when somebody is so different, you don't recognize them. It was wonderful. That was the beginning that day of a major completion, you know, of just healing in your heart mm -hmm. and um, to be able to see God differently. Because if you don't know God intimately yeah. and you don't read, if you don't read the Bible, you're not going to find out who he is. But then when you read the word and you spend time with the Lord, you know, you ask him to... Um, Open your eyes to the scriptures so you can find out who he is. And then visit with him like he's your dad. Now, some people have pretty mean dads or yeah. they've had bad dads. God is the perfect father that, that takes responsibility for you and takes care of you. Even when you don't deserve it. And that's what Jesus did for us. When Father God loved you so much that he gave his only son only child. He didn't have another child. Jesus was it. And Jesus was willing because he loved us. He was just as willing. But for Father to do that, mm -hmm. and then and then we turn around and we go, we're bad. No, no, you know, our flesh is bad, but Papa God values us so extremely, and that's the word, extremely, that he gave his only child to save us because he loved us just like he loved Jesus. Now, a lot of people don't believe that, Jeff, but that's what mm -hmm. Scripture says, <laughs> and that well, we are joint heirs with Christ now. So what's interesting is um, Leif Hetland has the mm -hmm. book, and I believe it's called Healing the Orphan Spirit. Mm -hmm. And he talks about what happens when you have that orphan spirit. It's, it's the spirit of the world that doesn't know the goodness of God right. mm -hmm. and doesn't have that, that intimate, close <laughs> relationship with Father God because He is the perfect Father. Mm -hmm. And I think of that scripture that talks um, about, you know, Jesus said, you know, you, you being evil know how to give good gifts. Mm -hmm. How much more does our Heavenly Father uh, know how to give us good gifts? And so we, even in our our fallen nature in this world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we want good things for our children and we want to help right. them and we want to bless them and jesus is saying how much more so 
Does Heavenly Father love us and He wants to bless us? So that that book, that orphan spirit that He That's talks about one. is what mm -hmm. separates us from the love of the Father. Mm -hmm. And when we can finally understand how we, in the world, we feel like we've been orphaned. <laughs> but when we come into that relationship with God, it completes that relationship that God intended for us and fills all those gaps that we've been looking for. So people are out trying to find um, their their value. They're trying to find their purpose. They're trying to, Through you know, all what's kinds the meaning of, of life? Yeah. And they seek all mm -hmm. these things to fulfill them. And mm -hmm. it's just vanity. They they just mm -hmm. struggle and they just go from one thing to the next and they don't find that fulfillment right. that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so it's the Father's relationship, yes. His love, and it's that intimate relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, and the Father that is what fulfills you. And what's amazing is God has a plan and a purpose and value for your life. Every one of you. And so you can rest Every human in that. Being. And when you find that, when you discover God's plan and His purpose for your life, man, it's, it brings this just a peace and joy and happiness. Excitement, yeah. And so going back a little bit, when I finally humbled myself and said, God help me, and He, he intervened when I opened the door, He said, yes. And if we will ask, and if we will open ourselves up to That's the right. Lord. That's right. You know, Jesus said, seek and you shall find. Knock mm -hmm. and the door shall be opened unto you. If mm -hmm. we'll ask God and if we're willing to let Him, then He will jump right in there and He will help us. And so I think there's probably a lot of people out there that are struggling and need some breakthrough. I, yes. I think of all the yeah. scriptures of how the Father is, is a God of breakthrough. And He wants yes. to bring breakthrough in your life. Not break down. He doesn't want to break you down. He wants no. to break through and invade your life with and love. And then build you up and, and build your life And peace and joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just give you that purpose. Mm -hmm. And give you that peace and meaning that He mm -hmm. always intended for you to have. Mm -hmm. And yet, He's been waiting for us to say yes. He won't just... Bust in and take over. No. The he's very is, gentle is with is us. such a gentleman. And he says, he says, if anybody invites me, I'll, I'll be there. You know, the Father is just like us in the way that he wants to be loved voluntarily. He wants to be wanted by you. He, he just like Jeff said, he won't just knock the door down. Now, to rescue you, he'll knock a door down to rescue you. But, but if you're somebody that's just going, I don't know. I don't know if I want God, you know, for whatever reason. If you knew how good he, he is mm -hmm. and how much he loves you. And that's what I was going to say earlier. A lot of people, Jeff, have had really bad dads. Some very abusive, oh, yeah. very abusive dads. I had a very good dad. But there are many people that don't. And, and... I always say, well, what is the perfect father mm -hmm. to you in your imagination? Yeah. What's the dad you always wish you had had? That's Papa God. He's perfect. He would never harm you. He would never beat you up. Yeah. He'd never condemn you. He'd never... We used to hear people say, God broke my legs. God put cancer on me. That's not to God. teach me a lesson. That's not God. He mm -hmm. doesn't have to do that yeah. to teach you. It's all in the Word. If you read the Word, He corrects us through what the Word says. And he comes to us gently mm -hmm. and talks to us. Yeah. When he corrects me, it's very gently. And, and he will explain to me certain things. Now, now mm -hmm. one time there was a rush to do something and, and he said, do it right now. You know, he can, he can tell you, do it now. I need you to do it now, right this minute. Step forward and say this. And, and I did. But he doesn't come to us in a harmful, angry way, mm -hmm. in a cruel way you know, mean, angry way and be abusive to you yeah. or say, I'm going to take this away from you because you did that. or I'm going to hurt you because you did that. You know, that's not how God deals with us. Whatever your need is today, the major need in all of our hearts first is to know how much God loves us. Mm -hmm. Once we do, it changes everything. It changes how we treat each other, mm -hmm. how we see each other, how we see ourselves. That's really what it did for yeah. you. When you see yourself as valuable, precious, and treasured, because God did treasure you, because He loved you so much that He gave His only Son.
So I just want you to begin to think about that if you don't know the Lord. And just please give him a chance and receive him. Because yeah. there's a scripture that also says that if God gave you his son, will he not give you all things? Mm -hmm. All things you, that you need. And if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. He loves you. He wants to bring you into a great life. He gives to us. He doesn't punish and demean us, and he's not cruel to us. He's there to bring you into greater life and great, enjoy, enjoyable, abundant life. Like mm -hmm. John 10.10 10 is our theme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember, it's the thief that comes. That's the devil. And the people he uses to come to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. It is not God. God is coming to every human to give them life and that much more abundantly. Amen. So remember that he is the good shepherd. You read that in John 10, 10, keep reading down through that passage. The Lord is the door. Mm -hmm. He's the gate. And he is the one that's the true shepherd. And we know his voice. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. We know his voice. And another one we do not follow. When you're born again, you know his voice. Mm -hmm. He brings good to people. Every perfect and good gift comes from above, the scripture says Amen. also. So I think you should pray. Okay. Uh, if, if you would also pray maybe for salvation for someone okay. and, then, and then pray for people that, will, that they will, you know, you need to get the same revelation. Some of you may have that, but okay. there are many that don't. So I just pray, Lord, I pray for those that are viewing right now, or maybe those that um, they know somebody that needs help. Amen. That's struggling that's right. in their marriage, they're struggling in their life, Lord, and we just speak mm -hmm. over them. We speak life over them and peace, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that you will just break into their life in a way that you're, you're calling out to them. Lord, help them to be willing to open up and receive the healing and the restoration in their life, Lord. Help them to cry out to you and help them to know how much you love them, that they would experience the love of the Father and they would experience that freedom and that peace that comes with that Heavenly Father relationship. Mm -hmm. So I just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for ministering to everyone here. If there's wounds and, and hurts in their heart and their life that they need to forgive or they need to let go, Lord, we just thank you. Your Holy Spirit is here to lead us and guide us into all truth. And so lead them, Lord. Guide them into what they need to do. And we just bless them in Jesus' name. And I pray for anyone that might be viewing that doesn't know Jesus personally as your Savior. If you would just pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. And you died in my place. And I receive forgiveness. I receive your death. And I receive your life. And I thank you. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. You know, if you prayed that prayer, let us know. We would love to uh, just visit with you and encourage you. And give you some next steps. Um, I know it's a uh, it's a, it's a new day out there. It is. Thanks. And there's a lot of people the getting saved these days. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wild and crazy things going on mm -hmm. in this earth, but we can stand fast and be mm -hmm. stable and steady, knowing that the Father is here, His love, and He's watching out for us, and He cares for us, and so we have nothing to be afraid of. Um, I like to say, don't let the bad news frighten you. Let mm -hmm. the good news enlighten you. Yes. Amen. So, all right. That's, well, that's it. Well, thank you so much for sharing Well, you're that. very welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> and next month, we have a couple that you will really enjoy. Their testimonies are quite amazing. So please, until next time, please like and subscribe and share this with your friends. And we just love you and bless you. And we will see you soon again. All have right. a great day. Bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.